Yo, welcome back everybody. Today we have gameplay from Barov showing off the impressive power of the newly buffed Critter Wrangler. In these kind of games, a lot of lobbies end up being these initiative-based compositions. And initiative-based compositions rely upon getting attack order from their own board to hit in a specific manner. Think about Leapfrogger comps. Or think about Omega Buster comps and whatnot. And if you see a lot of people going that direction, stop scaling. Stop playing for big stats because, quite frankly, big stats isn't going to do anything against those boards. All you really need to do to counter them is build the dreaded Juggernaut. That is Divine Shield, Wind Fury, Cleave. And if you can put a bunch of stats via Critter Wrangler on it, well, it just eats boards for lunch. And there's not a lot people can do to counter it because it turns out that Omega Buster boards, Elite Frogger boards, they aren't very good if you kill all of their stuff in one fell swoop. Yo, real quick break to say this video is sponsored by Firestone. You guys may have noticed that I have recently switched over on the stream and on these videos to the Firestone deck tracker, part of the Overwolf package. Firestone offers a variety of super helpful features such as hero stats right at the hero selection, in-game visuals for banned tribes, and minion lists for each tavern tier. Additionally, the application keeps turn-to-turn -turn stats for each player in the lobby, including leveling curves, recent triples, previous board states, and health totals per turn. Finally, super helpful simulators included, which allows you to test changes in positioning and unit choices against any and all of your opponents over the course of a game. Overall, it's a super helpful package, allowing anybody from beginners to experts to improve their play in Battlegrounds. You can download Firestone for free by clicking the link in the description below. And now, back to the video. So what are we doing here? We have a Rat King Chief Curve on three mixed minions. And we have a Grey Bell Normal Curve, one Beast Opener on two. Really depends on what he hit. If there are Death Rattles here for the Grey Bell, then he wins. Otherwise, I'm assuming the Rat King stayed on two on turn two because he got a minion that he buffed. All right, just like kill the tabby cat. That's cool. Everything else is whatever. Just no, 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 no. Tabby. No, 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 no. What is this shit? Ew. Imagine betting against Graybell. Graybell, 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 Graybell. Why are you this way? All right, we'll just Shiny's Curve with our extra gold, it appears. See if we can find our triple next turn. Then we power level. We saw a normal curve Gale Wing with an Alley Cat start. Remember, this was the two beast line. Does not have a hero power usage yet. So this is just normal curve, no hero power, Alley Cat start. Versus Grey Bell on two normal curve, non-token start, but a hero power. As long as neither level, it should be Greybell. I should say as long as Greybell doesn't level, it's Greybell. You'd expect the Greybell has found a death rattle by this point that outweighs the value of 1-1-1 one, one, one on the board. The average power of the board? I'd say so. But imagine Galewing. EPL. First tier power. Power leveling. Yo, Paper Crane! My dude, thank you so much for the six months. Pet cute dog. Bofer. Pet cute dog. Why won't you pet the dog? Bofer, I ask one thing. Why won't you pet dog? Yeah, I can pet a dog. So we can take the Chroma Wing, we can put it on the board. In the process, we would have to sell the Alley Cat or the Tabby Cat to be able to double level. Unfortunately, that also means that we will not hero power, so we're not going to do that. Bofer, why won't you pet adorable dog? All right. 
30 seconds. It's not like this hero takes, you know, paying attention to the game or anything. No, no big deal. We can pet a dog instead. Still a little bit down. <laughs> he got four vaccines today. At the vet. It's a lot. Normal curve, at least to three. Normal curve, gale wing to three. So how did Greybound not be gale wing? Hope they're drinking lots of water. They did initially. Now they're sleeping. They'll be fine. I'd appreciate the concern. All right, here's the deal. We're not going to get scammed by this. We're not. We are. We are going to get scammed by this. Lovely. I would like to take six damage here. Thanks, Eddie. Paying us back for last game. All right. It's either a five right now or six next turn. The upside of the five right now is number one, it's a good lobby for five stars. Number two, we get tempo immediately. We don't have to freeze the board. Higher likelihood of finding the AKM triple soon. Hmm. Yeah. Fixes aren't that amazing. Yeah, but counterpoint is Calicos. I don't even consider the Agam. I know there's two blood gems in my hand, but that is a four tribe Mithrax on a hero that loves the power level. Some could say that I like this line. This seems decent. That seems like the single best minion we could have hit. Four on turn six, tripling into a five star versus Hook Tusk. Two triples, one into a four, one into a six, losing heavily. Ew. That one's scary. Silas sells part of the board and it's an alley cap board into a five here. Does the one five star get him there? And this guy's got a six now? Mithrax is a good dude. He, he a homie. Nice, we avoided damage. But leapers, by the way. Yeah, this one's a coin flip to me. Hooktoss taking a six here is very sketchy, but... Yeah. If it's a good six star, it just beats this bullshit five star board, right? Look at this. Like, he has to sell off part of his board to take a five. I'm not sure why he did that line. And if the hook toss hits anything, even though he's a tavern tier above him. Oh, we scammed. Yeah, we want a slightly unfavored coin flip. We got him. Orgozoa seems pretty damn good yet again. Seems like I'm leveling to the moon, so... Taking cards like this should be pretty solid. It gives us an extra tribe on the board as well. Bunch of extra stats. Feels good, man. Feeling pretty solid on this one, right? Yeah, I'm happy to avoid taking 5 to 6 damage that turn. We take da don't take damage almost 40% of the time, so... Doesn't feel that scammy. All right, he EPL'd his way to four, has been losing rounds since, but has had a lot of time to stabilize on four. The Grey Bell leveled this turn, which means he's that board plus one minion. Now he doesn't have a hero power yet, other than five extra gold. He EPL'd first choice. Yeah, but this guy's not strong either. One more beast on the board, though, or something like that. Does make the bird buddy board decent. Neither one's that strong. This is a black box to us, and this guy's weak, but we just kind of assume the I have no hero power hero probably doesn't get very far.
Dude, look how big Mithrax is already. When in doubt, and you're offered Mithrax mid-game, take Mithrax. Like, you can just level with it, not take damage, then go buy other stuff. It's so strong. They tied. Naturally. Why wouldn't they tie? Amalgam? It's okay. I think I'd rather have gold. Don't want any of this stuff. Hmm. Nadine is kind of interesting. I really need to commit to that already. He's pretty strong. The 7 4 that shields a crumbling. At 35. Just really cheap. Squid! Give me squids instead, actually. Yo, go get this gamble right real quick. I can't tell if this guy hit anything. It was a mid-game board that didn't have direction. This guy is chilling. Leveled to five this turn. This guy leveled to five this turn. I'm assuming that I, if I thought about this one a little longer, I think Eddie is the favored one because he wouldn't have leveled if he wasn't feeling confident there. That was a pretty good set of hits. I will take it. This is fantastic. This could not be better. I should have I should have taken the, the Varden in hindsight. It's not because two triples or whatever, it's just because this indicates he knows he's strong. Yeah, we cost ourselves here. That's too bad. Fritter Wrangler seems decent. Glow Scale seems decent. Myrmidon seems decent. This board did have two six stars on it. They're just not six stars I want. Hmm... It's okay to buff. You ever like Mithrax pair? I don't think so. Agam? A lot of different directions here. Myrmidon? We just don't have enough power on this board yet. Now we're kind of steering away from Mithrax. We can do one more board here. Interesting. You can buy that. But I think I want to keep the Orgozoa for the turn. I don't need to play the Critter Wrangler for one targetable thing. I, I have no idea how he hit. What is going on over here? Is this guy a prophet? Does he understand how to play Galewing better than everybody else? 31 health. Turn turn 1 EPL. Goes to 6. No triples. Naga 5 does 15 damage to somebody. Is he the chosen one? I don't understand what this board is. It has to be just like, I found all brutes or something like that. And when are they tied? They tied. 
was gonna say and wins too. Oh my god. Critter Wrangler pair. Myrmidon's interesting. Now we got more reason to play Critter Wrangler. Getting a triple would be very, very nice. Or you know, a Thissa at some point. Another Mithrax. Naturally. Why wouldn't it be an Orgozoa? Awkward. Awkward, awkward game. Alright. That's gotta happen. We need one more gold. And we need to sell a slot off this board. That's probably you. Could be you. Actually, probably should be you, actually. In hindsight, that was a silly statement. Just gonna be both of you. I'm gonna hear a power here. My play. Let's make a big cleave this lobby. I'm gonna take one of you. Then it's just a question of like, do I wanna put. A 4-4 four, four buff on the Hydra, or another Divine Shield on the board for a turn? Wow, he limped up the 6 with that, huh? It's Frog, take buff? Yeah, I'm aware. There's multiple people playing Beast. Like, playing into Mantids and playing into, like, Orgazoa or whatever, just, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, you can't target a Divine Shield with Divine Shield. Never mind, moot point. You can't do that. I'd argue on here. Yeah, I don't mind that either. That's not a viable option. <laughs> then hold it out of principle. That is the way it feels. This thing getting a 4-4 buff is way better than getting a random shield on this board for this turn. If I can't have it, then we're going to just throw a hissy fit. This is stupid. I want my 4-4 four, four buff. Nice clean up. Didn't take much damage. He's looking for the... Looking for the frog. Looking for the baron. Varden dies. Get our gold. And... Any blood gems on this? 2-2? Two, two? So we can get 4-4 four, four buff off that? Doesn't seem quite good enough. Beasts yet again. Very awkward. Very awkward, bub. Alright, these things are not things. Alright, bub. I see you. You're being fucking funny. You're fucking hilarious. You're hilarious. I guess. We just aren't doing shit that right now, huh? That's what's gonna happen? We're gonna sit here and do nothing? The only spellcraft spell we found at a reasonable time in that turn was a taunt. And I'm not taunting the fucking Hydra. Awkward. But this lobby's too fast. We know there's too much beast. Depending on who we're fighting, like, it, there's not a lot of incentive to Argus up this right now. In fact, like, it being Argus may be worse. There's too much beast in the lobby for us, like, beast, beast, beast. For us to be, like, all in on scam. Against the beast, this is the most important card. Against the Naga boards, these are the most important cards. And against demons, who the fuck knows? I guess it's these guys again. Uh, losing, losing, losing. Losing. Mm, he may have recovered. It all it takes is one good card for the Grey Bell. Poor Orgozoa's got sold. 
Yeah, there's nothing I can really do there. Three sevens can't exist on the board when we're losing rounds. Yeah, that was a pretty good opening hit, turns out. Hydra? Really good against Leapfrogger boards. Alright, well. We scammed the shit out of him. <laughs> Mantis eat a 200-200 there at the end. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate, Silas. Mm-hmm. You gotta feel for the guy. The game. That is a clutch hit. Coiler's kinda interesting. Kinda. Not as interesting as Orgazoa. You could argue the extra glow scale is just good enough to put on the board and keep on the board against the Naga board here. And we try to pivot next turn appropriately. Or we could try to play Orgozoa this turn. I think this guy is weak, which I kind of do. Kind of like trying to greed the Orgozoa here. I think we'll do that. Ooh. Ooh, piece of candy. Wind Fury for next turn. If we get a beast board, our Wind Fury cleave, two beast boards. Yeah, we got really lucky to get rid of this guy. Because he's getting close too. Everybody's just kind of leapfrogging this game. That's why Hydra is so important. Nothing beats that board on stats, so we have to get like good cleaves and shit to scam people. One of you looks like you have a way better board, beast board than the other. Lost a coin flip. I haven't played in a while. Is Leapfrogger a good unit now? Yeah. Leapfrogger's just good because Baron's good. Kind of the same reason it's always been good. Nothing's really changed. It's just Leapfrogger's been a top tier comp since the beginning. It was broken when they introduced it and it was good after they nerfed it. The fuck is this song? This is what I get when they let Spotify recommend music past my playlist. Get out of here. Miss me with that shit. I see. I see. Spoiler for the turn. I don't think there's a lot or much more we can do here. We're going to have to commit resources this turn. Really no way we can greed past this. Interesting. We could do the Wind Fury right now for the extra attack because we can put another one in our hand for next turn. Can't gamble, but that's not really a big deal. Might be overcommit. I just really like the stats on the cleave. All right, we can put Baron on the board at the end or whatever too. Really just we want to be able to build Wind Fury cleave here on the Hydra every time we see a, a beast board. Wind Fury cleave, Divine Shield isn't really necessary. Just depends on what we're fighting. Like the beast boards, you don't have to win or divine shield the Hydra. We should divine shield like anything that's back behind. 
Wind Fury Cleave, good. Yeah, big stats, it's not great against, but all these utility boards, bunch of death rattles, all that kind of stuff, like, super good against him, super good against him. Here, not as much, here, not as much. Cleave them to death. Do it. Do it, Dad. I see five, four minions on the board, and I see two Divine Shield Poisonous Manthids on my board. Which one wins? Somehow this, this Imp Mama is just going to go to town. Spawn so many things it kills the Manthids. Feels good, man. That was a pretty strong board. But big stats in this meta is just so baity. So easy to see the big stats and be like, this is the direction to go, and you just get killed in the mid game. Double Beast board. This is why we built you. This is your time to shine. This is your moment. This is why we play the game. Hmm. Could have left the Wind Fury on the board, like a good player. So I have it for next turn. Like I'm not dumb. But honestly, why would I do that if I could just make the game harder for myself? Crazy how many first place games you can get from Mantids and a couple 50-50s? Yeah, it's kind of the idea with the late game right now is that the game is very heavily fixated on counter stats. So like when you get a big stat board, you really just want to consolidate it down to a couple things. One or two things. That take up board spots and then play counter to what your opponents are doing. All right, well, it doesn't have a Golden Leap Frogger, so, like, good luck. We got that. Okay. Feels good, man. That board still got third place. Just because I had Baron and Leap Frogger and was Grey Bow. I had a board of 300 300 runs last night that ran into double Manted Leroy, double... Six, two six seven. Yep, that is the kind of the way the game plays. Made me so mad. I had to sell a 1200, 1200 in stats to buy a Baron Ghoul to make a Buster. Yeah. Well. That'll do. <laughs> the ghost took care of the rest. We got a plus 69. Nice. Just bear off things.